Welcome to our next video of Angular Automation with Protractor, TypeScript and Cucumber course. And in this video, I'll be talking about understanding how Protractor works. How Protractor works after working with 10 plus session on Protractor? Well, yes, is the time right now. We saw how painful the debugging experience in Protractor was in our previous video while we tried to debug the code via Visual Studio Code. Do you know what is the reason behind it? Well, that's why we are here in this session. Now we know that Protractor is used for automating Angular application via a real browser, something like Chrome or Firefox or IE. We also know that Protractor is built on the top of WebDriver.js and Node.js. And since we are using TypeScript, we're just using that as an extension to write the code like a, another language binding. Then eventually we should be aware that both WebDriver.js and Node.js are asynchronous by itself. But since WebDriver.js is based on promise, it is in turn wrapped around what is called as WebDriver's control flow. If you think something like this, well, of course, it really makes sense to me as well, because that's what I thought for the first time. So let's get back to the basic then. The WebDriver.js library uses a promise manager to ease the pain of working with a purely asynchronous API. Rather than writing a long chain of promises, the promise manager allows you to write the code as if WebDriver.js had a synchronous blocking API, something like other programming language bindings of Selenium. So if you see the left hand side of code, you can see there is a chain of promises like builder.farbrowser.build.den.den.den. So it is basically resolving all the promises but if you see the code that we are writing right now, we are writing something like this in the right hand side. So everything is being managed by the promise manager. And Protractor adapts Jasmine so that each specs automatically wait until the control flow is empty before executing. So if you see in our Protractor core so far, we're using the describe and it block. And if you try to run the particular test using the describe and it blocks, it will automatically resolve and it will run the test for you, meaning the promise is being resolved. I have not shown that yet for you in this course so far. We will do this very quickly in a couple of minutes now. Jasmine expectations are also adapted to understand promises. That's why this line works. The code actually adds an expectation task to control flow, which will run after the other task. So promise manager is the guy who made our debugging to not happen since this guy expect us to fulfill and promise before moving forward. That's why our code was just running in different lines and automatically we just saw that the application was running at the end of our debugging experience. But the good news is in future release, neither promise manager nor control flow are going to be there within protractor or WebDriver JS. Since the control flow is set to be removed instead of control flow, you can synchronize your command with promise chaining or upcoming ES7 feature or ECMAScript 7 feature of async and await. And again, if you ask, what is this async and await? Well, just hold tight. We'll be discussing that in our next video of this course. So let's quickly see this in action of debugging the code via the Jasmine's describe and it block. So we'll see the debugging experience right now is going to be a little improved and you will see that the page will eventually execute as if you're executing a synchronous programming. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio Code. All right, so this is the same project which we have been working so long. We have created so many page objects. We have created some generic code, some libraries. Everything is pretty cool. So while we tried to debug this particular piece of code, we were running out with some issues. We also set the debugging experience and we have a debugger being configured. So if I try to debug this test right now, you can see that in our previous code, we were running the different lines every time while the debugger was trying to hit. So what I mean is if I try to put this side by side here, you can understand what I really mean just to recap. So if I do an F10, F10, and if I do an F5, you can see that the page is still not loading. There we go. You can see that the open browser is called, but the page has not loaded and the get all headings is being called, but still nothing has happened. And then click first heading is being called and still nothing has happened, but eventually the application opened and performed all the operation very instantly after the end of our session, which is kind of nagging, which is not real time. The reason is because 
the whole programming concept or the whole protractor itself is built on the top of WebDriver.js and Node.js, which are a asynchronous programming. So in order to resolve this using the Jasmine's adaptation of protractor, I'm just gonna cut this particular piece of code. And let's say I'm gonna put this in here, in the next it block. Similarly, I'm gonna put this particular piece of code by cutting it into the next it block, right? Let me quickly format the document so that it looks more neater. There we go. And then I'm gonna run the same test once again. So let this time, I'm gonna hit the breakpoint in these different it blocks. And now if I try to debug this particular piece of code, you'll understand what I really mean. So the particular application is right now debugging. So let me put this again in side by side so that you can have a clear view of what we're really doing. So I'm gonna just do an F5 right now. And you can see that we are in the open browser. So again, I'm gonna do an F5. If you remember in our previous time, while we do an F5, the browser was not open yet. I did not navigate it to the particular home page. But right now, you can see that it is navigating to the application. And get all headings, just note in here, if I do an F5, you can see that the heading is actually coming, right? And if I do an F5 again, it is gonna click the particular course and it's gonna exit the test, which means Right now, the asynchronous programming is actually working as a synchronous program. So how to resolve this kind of issue? And that's why we can discuss in our next video. So this is what is Protractor. Basically, we are running the whole test so far in a synchronous manner, but this was running like a synchronous manner, like opening the browser and navigating to all the headings and clicking the first heading. It was actually happening like a synchronous way. And the reason behind for this is the promise chain and the control flow of WebDriver. To make this session more sense, I'm going to meet you in our next video where we'll be discussing about asynchronous programming and then understand how to make the debugging experience much more realistic than what we are seeing right now.